Hi hey guys, this is Calistonian. In this video I'm going to go over some methods for adding player color to textures in Age of Mythology Extended Edition, which in my opinion is significantly easier than for the disc version of the game. Uh, if you're following the modeling guide, this will be section 2.4. If we go ahead and look at section 2.4, uh, the reason that I'm making this video is because I realized that the workflow that it advocates in the guide where you're basically working directly with the layer mask, you're working in black and white, is not extremely practical and it's not actually something that I do very often unless you're dealing with very, very basic geometry like the gingerbread house that we make in the guide in the previous section. You really can't work like this because you it's impossible to tell which parts of the texture map you're painting white over. So. In this guide, we'll discuss two methods for adding player color to textures uh, that are both fairly straightforward. Um, so what we're going to start with as our example is the uh, iron hoplite texture. And for the sake of example, you know, f the texture that you'll extract that we're looking at here is the TGA that was extracted from the DDT. Uh, and this is what you'll see when you first open it in GIMP this already has the player color set up so what I'm gonna do is start us off I'm just gonna remove the player color section and we're gonna start off with just the diffuse map and we maybe we painted this ourselves after we finished modeling uh, or maybe we found this we found parts of this image on Google images or something like that whatever uh, but the point is we have this diffuse map here and right now it has no player color data so although these parts are kind of gray and you can see his skirt is kind of gray and the shoulder pads are white the game is still going to present these as the colors they show up on the diffuse map so it's going to present this as white and it's going to present this as gray but we don't want that we want this to be presented as gray but with a shade of blue for player one or red for player two or what have you uh, and likewise for for these bits so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take our diffuse map we're going to add a layer mask transfer um, alpha channel and now we're just going to paint. Make sure that you have uh, your painting in black. The foreground color is black. We're going to take our pencil tool, and you can resize this tool uh, as you like. But we're just going to paint. Um, and and what you will see is that as you're painting black, what is actually happening is you're painting the alpha channel over the diffuse. So you're telling it this is the bit that we want to have player color on. And if you were, if I were actually making this as a mod and not just an example, I would really go through with a smaller brush size and get these real small parts, uh, each individual section. But I'm not going to do that. And it looks like you know whoever originally did this didn't do that either, because uh, it was a little bit sloppy, as you could see when we first when we first extracted it. It is kind of player color all over the place in little bits. So it doesn't need to be perfect. And as you can tell, you know, I'm not doing a perfect job either. I'm just quickly going through this and covering all the bits that we want to have player color on. Like so. And now what you can see is if we go back and we show the layer mask, uh, this is exactly the opposite of what we want. So we can paint black on here all we want, and this is kind of what the guide was talking about as you look at it in this view and you paint black, but you have no idea what you're painting on. That's not what you want to do. At this point, what we want to do is we want to invert the colors. And the reason we want to do that is because Age of Mythology is going to read, the game engine is going to read the white section as player color and the black part as not player color. And with this done, we can reapply the layer mask and there we have it. We've pretty much regenerated the kind of nonsensical looking thing that we first extracted from the DDT. And that's what we want. And this will work in game. Um, but it is fairly time consuming. So if we had, you know, a, a fairly complicated, um, if, we, if, if this were a fairly complicated map, instead of a 64 by 64, maybe it's a 512 by 512, which we're going to look at in a second, then you know it could be fairly time consuming to go through and actually paint over all the parts. So instead of doing this, what we can actually do, and for this we'll use a texture that was created by Creative Assembly for REM2 Total War, uh, what we can do is we can use Select by Color. And we can take, like, let's say we want this entire spiral, maybe these spiral parts, uh, to be player color. And maybe this checker pattern in here to also be player color. So basically, we want the red and the blue to be player color. So what we're going to do is we're going to use select by color, and we're going to select. 
Oh, what's happening? So what's happening here, if, if you're unable to select, it's because of the tool options. So we go to the tool options for this and see our radius is way too large. I'm just gonna set the radius down to zero and the threshold at 20, we'll see how that works. And this will let us select. And if we zoom in here, we can, you know, look over the texture and see, is this more or less um, selecting all of the bits of color that we want to be player color? And it's really not. You see, there's a lot of these bits that we do want to have player color on that are not going to be covered in player color. So what, what we can do is we can just increase the threshold a little bit and see if that will give us a better result. And that looks good to me. You want to make sure sometimes, uh, as you'll see probably in a moment if, when we do the red part, you select things on the edges of the texture that you don't want to have selected. But to me, this is looking good. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to switch to foreground color white and I'm just going to fill the selection. Make sure that you have your uh, paint bucket fill tool on fill whole selection. We're going to fill the entire selection with white. Okay, so this looks good. Uh, there's still going to be little bits here that are not player color, but that's okay because if we want, we can go in and we can paint over that. We can actually paint white over that, but for the purpose of the example, uh, I'm just going to keep going through and filling the colors. So I'm going to select none, and then we're basically going to do the same thing with the red part. And you see what's happening with the red is like I was talking about is it's pulling a whole lot of these textures around the edge. It's, it's pulling a whole lot of pixels around the edge. So to fix that, we can just de try to decrease the threshold. And uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, there's still a lot of color up here that is just, you know, it's just really close to the color that they used for the spiral. They use the same colors here. So decreasing the threshold is only, is going to be a trade-off. But, you know, that looks pretty good. I, I'm satisfied with that. And you can play with the threshold some more to try to get more of just the spiral and less of this. But I think that's just the cutoff point right there at 17. So that looks fine. And I'm just going to fill that part with white as well. And the reason we're filling with white, you may be wondering, we don't have to actually fill these colors with white to get them to show up as player color. But the reason that we do want to do that is uh, because if, for example, we do player color over something that's black, um, then it's it's basically going to show up as black in game. If it's like very, very dark shades, it will still have player color on it. So if it's for player one, it'll still be blue, but it'll be so dark that it'll basically uh, just look black. So you white is ideal for player color. That's the reason why uh, Ensemble Studios uses white is because, you know, colors just show up better over white than over darker colors. So this is looking pretty good. Now, if we were to, I'm gonna select none here. If we were to uh, just, you know, convert all of this white color to alpha channel, uh, we would also probably pull this white bit. I can actually show you that. If we just do color to alpha here and do this, what will happen, you can actually see on the little preview here, is that it's picking up some of this white color from these bars. And I don't really want to do that. Uh, I just want to get the white that we actually designated to be player color. I don't want this little gray bit kind of miscolored that is within the threshold value of color to alpha. I don't want that. I just want to select this white bit. So I'm going to select this white. I'm going to set the threshold to zero and just take the white color that we filled. Now I'm going to go colors and color to alpha and click OK. And that's it. Boom. Uh, you've got all of this selection is all the selection that you wanted to be player color is now alpha channel. So we go back to layers. Now we're going to add our layer mask transfer and show the layer mask. Select none. And I'm trying to use as few hotkeys as possible. So, so excuse me, please, if I'm using hotkeys and it's hard to follow along. I'm trying not to do that. And just like before, we're just going to invert these colors and then we're going to apply the mask and this is what it will look like. Uh, and this looks optimal. And so these are gonna be very brightly, since it's, it's complete white, this is gonna be very bright player color in the game. Um, so that's pretty much it. So now you can export this, just file export as, and go ahead and export this texture and it will work in game. So these are the two methods uh, that you have to kind of quickly 
add player color to any textures in the game. Uh, so if you have any questions about this, if I went through it too quickly or I explained anything unclearly, uh, please leave a comment and you know I'll definitely reply to you. Um, so thanks. Or if there are any questions about the guide or anything else that's unclear, uh, just please let me know. So thank you for watching um, and have fun texturing stuff.